welcome to Meetings in Math. Today we are going to be talking about relations and functions. And our essential question today is, how can we use mapping diagrams to help us identify and describe a function? Today you'll need your Jaguar Jots in section 6.1, a pen or pencil to write with. You might find a highlighter be helpful. You will always need your problem solving skills and some inspiration. So let's get started by using some definitions. Ordered pairs can be used to show inputs and outputs. Inputs and outputs are related to one another with relation pairs. So relation pairs, inputs and outputs. So somehow there's something going on with the input and output and it's up to us to figure out what that is. A relations can be represented either with ordered pairs or with mapping diagrams. And we'll be talking about that later. And a relation that pairs each input with exactly one output is called a function. And that right there is probably the most important thing that you need to remember today. And for this entire chapter is that this exactly one output is a function. So make sure that you take some time to draw attention to that in your notes. So here's our first example that we're going to look at. We have um, example A where we have a mapping diagram. So when we have an input and output with arrows like that, that is called a mapping diagram. And what we wanna do is we now wanna change it into ordered pairs. So when we are looking at this, what we're looking at is we are going to say that the input is the X value and the output is the y value. And so when you're writing an ordered pair, remember that it goes x comma y. And so we are going to write our ordered pairs in that way. And so it's just a matter of putting them into the parentheses. So the first one would be two comma one. And then you will continue on four comma two, six comma three, and eight comma four until they looked like this. The next one, we're going to do it in the exact same way, paying attention to where the arrows go to. So on the first arrow, you can see that the one goes to the four. And so our first order pair would be one, four. Now our two goes to zero. So we would have an ordered pair two, zero. So our first one was one, four. And then we have two, zero. But we also have two going to negative five. So two also goes to negative five. And then three went to negative six. So all you're doing is you're matching them up to which parts they go to. So what we're looking at here is just how do you change a mapping diagram into ordered pairs? We're not looking at functions. We're just understanding how they work together. On this one, we are looking at is a mapping diagram a function? And remember, that means that each input has to go to exactly one output. And so that's what we're going to do. We are going to look at each input and does it go to exactly one output? So let's look at this. And zero goes to two, so that's good. So zero went to two, and that's great. Then one went to four and that's good. And two went to six, but coming off of two is seven. So I like to think of this as I'm standing at a Coke machine and these are the numbers or these are the buttons on the outside of the Coke machine. And then these are the things that can come out. And is this predictable? So I'm gonna get rid of some of this extra stuff now and we're gonna talk about this a little bit more. So if I'm standing on the outside of the Coke machine and I press this button, I predict and I will know that every single time I will get a two out. Every single time I know this is going to happen. It is predictable. This is good. This is what a function does. A function is predictable. I know what's going to happen. So when I press the one, I know every time I press the one, I am going to get a four out. So if a four is my favorite number and I always wanna make sure I get a four out, I am going to press the first button or button number one. And I know that this is good. 
Then I come along and I press button two. Now I have a problem. When I press button two, I don't know if I'm gonna get a six or a seven. It is no longer predictable. This means it is not a function because I cannot predict what it is that I'm going to get. I don't know if I'm going to get a six or if I'm going to get a seven. So it is not predictable. If it is not predictable, it is not a function. Function means it is predictable. I know what I will get every single time. So this right here is causing us a problem. Because I cannot tell you what I'm going to get, this is not a function. In other words, for every input, this gave me two outputs. If we go back to our definition of what a function is, it said every input has exactly one output. This did not have exactly one output. This had, right, for every input, there was exactly one output. I had two outputs. So that is not going to be a function. So this is not a function because an input of two has an output of six or seven, and I can't predict what I'm going to get when I press two. So let's look at B. When I look at B and I press two, negative two, I get a two. That's good. And I can only get a two out. That's very predictable. So far, so good. When I press negative one, I get a one out. Very predictable. I know what I'm going to get. It's kind of getting messy, so I'm going to get rid of that. When I press a zero, I'm going to get out of the zero. I know what I'm going to get. It's very predictable. I'm happy with that. When I press a negative or positive one, I am going to get a one. Now I'm getting a little bit confused. When I pressed one, I got one. And when I press negative one, I also got a one. So there was two ways for me to get a one. We'll come back to that. When I press two, I got a two. Pretty simple, I'm happy. So the one I'm not sure about is this one. So think of it this way. You walk up to the Coke machine and you want to get a Dr. Pepper. Dr. Peppers are super, super popular and there are two buttons for Dr. Pepper. Doesn't matter to you which one you pick. No, if I pick the top button or the bottom button, I am still going to get Dr. Pepper. It just is, there's two ways for you to get it. You can still predict whether or not you get a Dr. Pepper, no matter which button you press, so you are okay. It is still predictable what's going to happen when you are pressing an input button. It, it's all a function is saying is it is predictable what happens when you press an input button. So this is a function because I know what I'm going to get when I press input buttons. Each input goes to only one output. So even though these both went to one, that's okay because each input goes to only one output. So kind of the trick to look for here is, see how this had a V coming off of it? You can't have that. See how all of these only have one thing coming off of each of them? That's okay. So let's look at this. Are these here functions or are these not functions? In other words, are they predictable? Each input has only one output. They each have only one line coming off of them. I'm looking at this first one right here. They each have only one line coming off of them, so that's good news. So then how do we figure out how I go from an input to an output? For this one, we start looking for patterns. So if I look at my pattern that's happening here, three to four, four to five, and five to six, those are each increasing by one. So that's very nice. Then I look at 36 to 48, 48 to 60, and 60 to 72. Those were all increasing by 12. And so we just talk about those. 
one, it is a function, and two, each input is increasing by one and each input is increasing by 12. That's all we're looking for. So now let's look at the second one. Each, one, each input has only one output. That's good news. So talk about your inputs. How are they each increasing? They're each increasing by two and each of your outputs are also increasing by two. So it's just a matter of looking what's happening on each. They could have also been decreasing. That happens sometimes too. So the big takeaway here is what does it take to make a function and how can you change a mapping diagram into ordered pairs? And I want you to explain this to somebody in your house or somebody that's willing to listen, maybe even a librarian. There's always somebody willing to listen, but find somebody willing to listen and explain to them what a function is. Thank you so much for joining us. And remember, be kind to one another because we all can use some extra kindness in our lives. Bye for now.